Hello, everyone. So uh, what I'd like to do this uh, afternoon with you is uh, share the four big trends that we uh, strongly believe in that are going to shape the future of display and uh, share a little bit also what we intend to do about it and how we uh, intend to help the ecosystem grow around those, uh, those four trends. Okay, so the four big trends that we, uh, we see, the four major trends, the first ones are on fragmentation. Media is becoming more and more fragmented, and that's a problem when the uh, basic model of advertising was uh, based on reaching an audience at scale. This is becoming harder and harder. If I take, for example, um, TV, TV used to be five channel. When cable TV came, it became 500 channel. We believe that with online video coming up, we're talking now about 50,000 channel. So you need to approach the uh, audience in a completely different way. It's true also for entertainment. The best-selling CD used to sell 30 million copies. Best-selling CD last year sold 8 million copies. The second trend is around uh, mobile. I think you've heard a lot about mobile normally uh, around those, uh, those two days. Uh, the perfect storm has finally happened for mobile to really grow. Uh, we have nice phones, the, uh, the speed of connection is high enough, and this is still going to uh, increase. The phones are getting better every day, and the speed is going to increase. So I'll share with you a few numbers around mobile, but this is a trend that is, that is going to, uh, to sweep also everything that, we, uh, that we're seeing. The thing with mobile is, I would argue that at the moment, we see mobile a lot in a silo. We don't see mobile from a user perspective. The reality is with mobile, users are always connected, but it's the same user. So how do we address this new trend? The third thing is that we need to find the right intersection between science and creativity. The, the web has really grown around the science, understanding the data. Uh, we're, uh, we're probably the media which is the, the, the best equipped at performance, this, at performance advertising. Okay? We measure everything to the detail. What we see is performance going up the funnel, and performance now being able also to measure engagement, to measure branding, to measure emotions. And this completely changes the paradigm also. If you're able to measure the full attribution of a campaign, uh, and if science can help creativity get better, I think the whole media is improving also. And the third one is social. Again, this is a, a very common theme that you probably heard around those, uh, those two days. The web, so social is very popular on the web, okay? Everybody has a Facebook account, I assume, here. Uh, that's nice. Is the web social? You know, is, it, is, the, uh, is your advertising social? I'm not sure. We've really scratched the surface on what social means for the, uh, for the media. It's not because you, you have a social graph or you have a, a social account that the, your web experience becomes social. Uh, so I'll share with you also what we, uh, what we would like to, uh, to see develop in that space. Let me start with uh, the fragmentation. On the fragmentation, there's two things happening at the same time. First, like I said, there's a hyper-fragmentation of the content usage. Every one of us probably visits 700, 800 different websites every month. So it's becoming very, very hard to, uh, to find an audience at scale. And the second thing that's happening is that why are we looking at content uh, as the only way of targeting people? This used to be the way when you had a, a, a linear broadcasting of a media, and uh, actually um, a program was a, the best proxy to define the audience around that program. The signals that we have available at the moment are a lot more uh, precise. You can define where people have been, you can define what their interests are, uh, you can probably define also what time of the day it is, etc. So if we bundle this uh, data with the context, that's where we see the best performance happening. So that means that actually this is a huge challenge for the, for the full ecosystem. I'm competing with my friends from uh, Adobe uh, next door, so I hope you still hear me. Uh, this becomes a, a huge challenge for the full ecosystem. 
a, a challenge for advertiser. Uh, and advertiser have a responsibility to manage that data. Our argument is that along your campaign, your campaign should become better the more you, you spend money. Every dollar you spend should help you get a better campaign because you understand more who your audience is, you understand more how people react to your, uh, to your creative, you understand more how people interact with your uh, own website. So it's a, a key factor for advertiser. It's a key factor for agencies who really need to uh, develop that uh, intelligence on top of their buying to be more efficient at the way they buy. And it's a, a, a key factor for publisher. It's a responsibility for publisher to, surfa to surface sorry, the right uh, data for their site to be uh, uh, more easily uh, buyable. Before, you, know, you had a site, you say, OK, it's a finance website, you sell finance. That's not enough anymore. You need to, uh, to be able to uh, promote the, the type of environment that the ad is going to show upon. You need to promote the, uh, the, 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 where the, 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 the traffic comes from and where it goes after. And I think all, when all those uh, players are going to, uh, to, to get their acts together around the data, we'll see a huge increase in, uh, in performance. And this, if you add on top of this that you can do that real time, and so see at each impression when it happens, what uh, and make the decision based on the exact moment where the impression is delivered, if, if it is an impression relevant to you or not. That's where we see a huge surge in performance. Huge surge in performance for advertising, huge surge in performance also from the publisher. This is a, a data from um, our own ad exchange. Publishers on the ad exchange who have enabled real-time buying see uh, an increase of 188% uh, of their CPMs uh, compared to their uh, basic uh, remnant inventory. So this is, this is, I think, a great example of showing that when you surface the right data at the right moment and you enable the buyer to see that, you, you optimize the decision and you, you capture uh, a lot more of the value of that impression. The second uh, is around mobile. And mobile still strikes me. It's incredible. When you see those data, so the, the, the searches uh, on Google on mobile have increased 500% in the last two years. Uh, Google Maps, which I, I assume all of you use, or I hope, 40% of the usage of Google Maps is done through a uh, mobile web form. 40%. Even YouTube, OK? YouTube is a video site. Usually, uh, you would assume that it's better to watch it at home on a big screen. 15% of the videos viewed on YouTube are viewed on a mobile device. That's 400 million uh, views every day. That's the second largest uh, video website in the world, just YouTube mobile. And um, if you add to that, I I'd like to share with you one data. We activate every day 500, 550,000 Android phone. Every day, 550,000. Do you know how many uh, children are born every day? I guess 490. OK, so there's more Android phone activity every day than children being born. And that, I mean, that's just pure math. Uh, this trend is here to stay. And it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to take the world by, uh, by, uh, by, um, by surprise when those Android phones are coming, or uh, and I say Android, but uh, all kinds of smartphones are coming to uh, markets, uh, underdeveloped markets, where They'll be available, they're already available for $100. Tomorrow they'll be available for $50. And if everybody is equipped with those phones, those are going to become the, the, the primary access to the internet in many countries. Last point is imagine also this device being your main mean of payment. So you all learn of the uh, NFC uh, phone where you can pay with the NFC's chip. The problem with that probably is a chicken and egg problem. You need people with the phones, and you need vendors that have the NFC uh, device so that you can pay with your phone on the vendor. One example, Visa has partnered with Samsung in the UK around the London Olympics, and they're going to enable 60,000 uh, retailers with NFC payment. So suddenly, the chicken is catch up with the egg, and this can actually uh, uh, happen a lot faster than we expect. The renewal of phones is accelerating. 
and I wouldn't be surprised if the new iPhone 5, for example, has an NFC chip in it also. I, I don't know, I don't work for iPhone, but that, that's just a guess. For, uh, third point, the intersection of, uh, of science and, uh, and creativity. A lot of time when we, when we think creativity, when we develop advertising campaign, is done from a product perspective. We do a product-based advertising. Okay? What's my product? What's my unique value proposition? I do a 30-minute movie and I broadcast it to my audience, to my uh, uh, potential customer. The shift that we see happening is that the advertising should actually be user-centric. What, what each user should receive as a message. And each of us is different, so we should, we should receive a different message. When you go and talk to your friends and try to convince them of something, you probably use different words, depending if it's your wife, if it's your best friend. And this is actually possible with dynamic creatives uh, happening on the web. The, the, the creative can adapt to the interest of the person that sees the ad, uh, to the demographic data, to the time of the day, uh, or to the ad that they have seen also just before. Maybe you don't want to uh, expose three times the, sen the same ad. Maybe you can create a storyline between your ads. And this is, this is opening a full suite of new um, opportunity for creativity on the web. Uh, Another example of, uh, of this creativity and science is uh, this, exam this uh, format that we've just launched on, um, on YouTube. It's called TrueView. TrueView is basically a, a skippable pre-roll. And the way it works is if the user skips, the advertiser doesn't pay. And it's sold on an impression-by-impression impression basis, auction-based. But so what happens if, the, if all the users skip? Obviously, we don't make money. So we don't show your ad anymore. Uh, so it forces really the advertiser to create better ads. And the better the ads, the less users skip, the less you have to pay. So better ad, pay less. And this is really uh, incredible when, if the, uh, if the creative agency can become responsible in the end for your media expense, because the better the creative agency, the less media you pay. And the, 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 the agency will get better if they are able to leverage the data that comes from those platforms also. They understand why people skip. What kind of people skip? Is it male, female? Uh, they, do they skip it, but do they come back to the, uh, to the content later? All those data are now available. And I think that's really going to, uh, to push creativity to a next level. The, the fourth point is around social. The thing with social is, okay, as I say, we all have our, uh, the social activity. We know what our friends that we haven't seen in 20 years are doing now. It's great, but why should I change my uh, behavior on the internet to benefit from my friends? We all value advices from friends. 90% of people say that uh, recommendations are the, the most trustful source of information. But why should I go somewhere to, uh, to, uh, to, to find what my uh, friends have to say. What we've done is, with the, the idea of launching the plus one button on website, was already to, uh, to expose what your friends think all across the web. So when you navigate all across the web, you have a feeling of what your social graph is doing also at the same time. Now, what, we are, uh, what we've announced the uh, day before yesterday now, is that we're launching those plus one button on ads. And so imagine if uh, when you see uh, an ad for, uh, I don't know, a supermarket, with a plus one button, and this ad has been endorsed by three of your friends, first of all, you're more likely to see the ad because three of your friends have liked it, so probably you're more likely to, uh, to like it also. And your attention, your engagement to that ad is, is immensely uh, better. And I think that this will really enable advertisers to, to finally leverage those social graphs and integrate it in their targeting and digital strategy. So how do we bring it all together? The, the, the three pillars of what we're trying to do, uh, and this is really at a, at a high level, the three pillars that, what, uh, that we're, uh, we're trying to build uh, from a Google perspective is one, to simplify the way digital media is bought. 
it's still very complex to buy. Okay? Uh, we estimate that it costs about $2 per $100 spent to buy a TV media plan. Okay, the, the cost of planning, of booking, of reporting, etc. it's about 2% on TV. It's 28% still online. And this is unacceptable. We need to fix this. We need to become a lot more efficient if we want to, uh, to spend this at scale. So we want to simplify the way uh, uh, media is bought. The second thing is media will be bought, media will be increased if we can demonstrate the performance. We're doing... Uh, we're doing a good job overall, all together, to demonstrate performance of, of uh, uh, direct media, okay? of uh, uh, cost per acquisition, cost per conversion. The media is pretty well uh, equipped for that. But for advertisers who value as performance the uh, brand identity, the brand recall, how you, uh, uh, how you create a brand, the, the performance is not very well shown yet. And so we need to, uh, as I say, to, uh, to, to, to push the, uh, the science up the funnel and help advertisers understand a, a lot more what the performance is about. And finally, so it's simple. People are convinced because they can read the performance. We need to make the ecosystem a lot more open. Uh, this is going to work if as many people as possible can buy uh, on this and can sell on this platform. So in a nutshell, the, uh, the way we think about it is to create this uh, uh, massive ad exchange in the middle that connects buyer on one side and connects seller on the other side and to provide to uh, buyers a suite of, uh, of tools and of data that allow them to optimize their, uh, their buys. So it's all about creating uh, an influx of, uh, of signals that will allow them to build their strategies. And on the other hand, uh, give the, the, the similar tools to publishers to help them understand better the value that they're creating page by page and to monitor and decide exactly to whom they want to expose their, uh, their inventory and how they want to expose it. So this is in a nutshell how we, uh, we see uh, the, the market evolving and uh, all of the investment that we're doing at the moment are on this. So we, uh, you've probably uh, seen the, the effort that we uh, carry around invite media that make, for example, the, the, the buy side a lot easier uh, and surface in one single platform all the data and all the inventory. Thank you very much.